Hi hey, folks, welcome to part three of my commentary on Gilbert Gottfried's reading of Genjo Kowan. But before we get started, I wanted to bring up something from the Mountains and Waters Sutra. I don't know if this is going to appear transparent against the blue screen thingy. But this is, uh, I, I just happened to come across this yesterday, right after I did my video yesterday. Oddly enough, I just happened to turn to this page and read the stuff I'm going to read to you right now, which has to do with Genjo Koan. He says, this is Shohaku Okumura, who's a, uh, one, of the, one of the Buddhist teachers who I admire most right now, active in the world today. So he says, Actualization is a translation of Genjo. This is the Genjo Koan of water. He's talking about the Mountains and Waters Sutras. Genjo is right now at this present moment. Koan is beyond time and space. Together they invoke timeless reality functioning here and now. The reality of our life is the intersection of the present moment and eternity. Pretty neat. Appear is another translation of Genjo. Gen means appear when used as a verb. As an adjective it means present. Other possible meanings are real or true. Actual is best, he says. Jo means to become, to accomplish, to achieve, or to complete. Moment by moment, things become something. As Buddha said in Sutan Ipata, our perception and experience of becoming and disintegration arising and ceasing is the basis of our interpretation of the world. Genjo Koan refers to the process of becoming and disintegration or disappearance, the way things become something and change again moment by moment. Genjo means this process happening at this moment, the actual reality of this moment. Uchiyama Roshi, that's, that's uh, Shohaku Okumura's teacher, paraphrased Genjo as the present moment becoming the present moment. Koan is the same expression as in koan stories. This word is used in China to mean a public document in a government office. In ancient China, all government documents were issued in the name of the emperor and had absolute power and authority. From this meaning, the word evolved to mean the absolute truth expressed by Chinese Zen masters. That is one of the meanings of koan in Zen literature, the expression of absolute reality with absolute authority. Putting the characters together, Genjo koan is a manifestation of universal, eternal reality at this moment within time, space, and function, in oneness with all beings. So there you go. There's some words of wisdom from Shohaku Okumura. I kind of cut and pasted a little bit from that, and uh, it starts on page 178 of the Mountains and Waters Sutra, if you want to go look it up yourself. Good stuff. So let's turn it over to Gilbert Gottfried one more time and listen to the next paragraph of Genjo Koan. Take it away, Gilbert. When you see forms or hear sounds fully engaging body and mind, you grasp things directly. Unlike things and their reflections in the mirror, and unlike the moon and its reflection in the water, when one side is illumined, the other side is dark. As I mentioned before, the version that my friend Chris, who's doing the voice of Gilbert Gottfried, is using is the Tanahashi and uh, Robert Aitken version of Genjo Koan. The version I prefer is the Nishijima and Cross version, and I'm going to read what they say for this passage so you can compare and contrast both as you like. When we use the whole body and mind to look at forms, and when we use the whole body and mind to listen to sounds, even though we are sensing them directly, it is not like a mirror's reflection of an image, and not like water and the moon. While we are experiencing one side, we are blind to the other side. And they have a footnote here that mentions that the word reflection is actually uh, yatosu. Uh, yadosu? It's hard to tell. Anyway, uh, yad yadosu. Uh, which means uh, literally to accommodate. So the, the mirror's accommodation of an image is what uh, Dogen actually said. So that makes it a little weird, because I'm sure there's a word for reflection in his day in Japanese, but he used uh, the word accommodate. It's a strange sort of sentence. The idea that when one side is illuminated, the other side is dark is kind of um, 
it, it's saying how we perceive things in this world and how our ability to perceive works. And so we can only perceive one thing at a time. We can only see things one way at a time. That's just the limitation of the, the human mind and the human instrument that we are given to try to navigate this world in. So it is important to remember that there's other sides to everything. And we already know this, and I can give you, you know, a nice little current events example, because I was watching a show called The Tudors recently, which is all about King Henry VIII and that, that time in England in the 1500s. And at one point, they are uh, trying to wage a war and an attack of dysentery happens, you know, among the, the, among the soldiers. I'm gonna, my hand's probably going to get cut off every time I go to that side of the screen. Anyway, whatever. But among the soldiers, there's dysentery. And the king asks, what's the cause of dysentery? And of course, in those days, nobody knew what the cause of dysentery was. And I forget what the line the person, his advisor, says is, but it's something, you know, kind of crazy. Uh, you know, the, the typical sort of medieval idea of what causes disease. Well, now we know for, uh, to a large extent what causes disease. I was going to say now we know exactly what causes disease, but I think there's still a little bit of uh, gray area in there, even in our current knowledge. But we have the, the germ theory and the virus theory, and those seem to work. And, and right now we are all enmeshed in the playing out of exactly what is, does the virus theory tell us, because the virus theory is still a bit incomplete. It doesn't tell us everything about how this current epidemic is going to go. So the point is, getting back around to it, that we can't see viruses. Now there are sort of some instruments that can give us a kind of a, a limited ability to perceive a virus, you know, in its, in its form, but we still can't see them. And because we can't see them, that means there's a lot of things operating in this world that are outside of our ability to perceive viruses being one such item and you know even even scientists working with highly sophisticated equipment cannot really perceive exactly what a virus is doing and back in the days of king henry the eighth they didn't even know they existed so so there is a lot in the world that we are unable to perceive and and viruses are just one thing there's a whole range of things in, in Buddhist philosophy, we say that we cannot understand the true nature of our world, at least intellectually, because it, it, it's beyond our ability. So that is what I think he means by when one side is illuminated, the other is dark. And I, I'm sorry that if my hand keeps <laughs> disappearing, <laughs> I keep realizing that I have to stay on this side of the screen or my hand will disappear. Anyway, that's, that's what that's about. And, and maybe that's something you know, we can talk about in, in the context of Buddhism at some point. So there you go. That's, that's my commentary on things as they stand. I had this idea when I first started working on this video that today's video was not going to be a video about the uh, Genjo Koan, but instead uh, some speculation or interesting ideas I had about the COVID situation, COVID-19 situation. And I spent some time researching it, you know, half an hour or an hour or whatever, uh, just to make sure I had everything right and I was up to date on the latest information. And that just let me know that the latest information, even the latest information is crackers. You don't, you don't know exactly what's going on and what's going to happen next. And I'm, you know, I'm no epidemiologist. One of the videos I watched mentioned how after 9-11, everybody in America became an expert on, on structural engineering as an example of how these things go. Uh, so that's... Um, you know, so I don't want to come across as one of these armchair experts, but I have been reading some of the expert experts and, and, and I think there's an encouraging thread that's going on kind of underground, which is saying, as I said earlier, that we don't really have all the numbers of all the people who have been exposed to this virus. 
and that skews everything towards making it look like it's much worse than it probably is. Now it may turn out to be actually as bad as, as, it, as it sort of seems. You know, there's always that possibility. But I am banking on the possibility that what I think is the much more likely outcome that when the numbers are all in, it's going to seem like this disease is, is considerably less scary than we imagine. Obviously, it's very scary given what's going on in uh, Italy and Spain and other parts of the world. Uh, so, so it's something to take seriously, but it it might not be the world-ending thing that we we that, that a lot of our pundits are, are sort of uh, presenting it as. My advice, again, as always, in in pe- to people who are are suffering from from overthinking this, as I am prone to do, is I'm sticking with the optimistic numbers, as I keep saying over and over again. The pessimistic numbers aren't going to change what I am going to do, uh, so I I don't need them. And the optimistic numbers aren't going to change what I'm going to do either, because I'm kind of acting as if the pessimistic outcome is what I need to prepare for and what I need to work towards and what I need to kind of you know make my actions according to those ideas, but. I don't believe them. (laughs) So I do all the stuff based on those very pessimistic projections, but I don't believe those pessimistic projections. I believe things are actually much better than we think they are, or that some people think they are. So for whatever that's worth, if that makes you feel good, that maybe that's cool, but uh, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if it makes anybody feel good just to know what I think. So that's my spiel, and that's what I think, and there you go. I, as always, get paid by your PayPal and Patreon donations, and I'm really thankful that most of you are still donating. That's great. As always, if you feel you got to put the brakes on it because you're worried about the financial situation coming up, that's fine. I'll be okay. So if you don't feel like you want to donate, that's groovy too. So just remember that. Uh, We'll see you later. I'll work on some more Genjo Koan stuff and have a good time. Stay well, stay clean. My hands got so, I was washing them so much that they got red and chafed. So I had to look up some information on what people, hospital workers have to wash their hands do about that. And I found out you put lotion on your hands all the time, made it feel a lot better. Just to remind you, I am washing up and keeping social distance and all the rest of that stuff, even though I have an optimistic outlook how this thing's going to go ultimately. I'm still doing all the protocols, and so should you. So we'll see you later. Bye.